as like, it would identify as a pop artist, many of them don't at all. But Paul Tech, you know, is famous for his like really timely sort of critiques of minimalism in the 60s with meat pieces that he would sort of put within very sort of minimalist Do Donald Judd-esque cases and so on. Um, this, is, this is a rare intervention in pop where he acquired an actual Andy Warhol uh, Brillo box and sort of made a meat piece inside it. So when you approach this from distribution and domesticity, it's like this, you know, it's a Warhol, but when you see it from pop politics, it's the rotten carcass at the heart of capitalism, or what have you, um, <laughs> or at the heart of pop. So, um, you know, another work to talk about really briefly, it, it just aligns so beautifully with, with Byerly. Of course, you know, now in the 60s, if you were like your average left-wing intellectual in, in America or elsewhere, he, people kind of liked him still. They didn't really know what he was up to. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of artists in this show, it's just a Cold War dynamic who parallel the visual culture and propaganda under various communist regimes with the visual culture and propaganda of popular culture. And like seeing them as two sides of the same coin. They're doing the same things. They're different kinds of opiates of the people or whatever. So here you have Bob Hope. Uh, there's something like 12 placards of Bob Hope and one of Chairman Mao, and it's called the Mao Hope March. Uh, and it's, called, it's by a Swedish artist who was in New York in 1966 called Eivind Falström, who's really mm. tremendously interesting guy. I think there's a little article about him in the ephemera case. And basically it's as simple as this. They made this as part of an action, you know, performance, just saturates this exhibition. But, um, but this kind of has become an artwork over time. And basically, yeah, it's now and hope. And there's actually an audio piece where they're going through interviewing people on the street going, yeah, so who are these guys? You know, and someone's like, oh, I think that's Bob Hope, and that's uh, the Vietnamese pre premiere, or whatever. <laughs> um, and they're like, well, it's speculating about why, why this is happening in this way. I think it's really important to bear this work in mind when we get to the end of the exhibition. We won't go into the room with you and we see the Leon Ferrari piece uh, called Western Christian Civilization. I mean, this is really, uh, I think, what Bob Hope is meant to represent in this thing. You know, this sort of all-American, very loyal, sort of, sort of, you know, up, up with the troops, all of this kind of thing, sort of, sort of character who was so um, lionized at that time, uh, but to sort of think of him somehow as representative of something and to think of Mao as a representative of something, just think of the play of putting them together. Now, there's plenty of other works we could talk about, but I know you want to... Yeah. This Falstrom was also a writer and a critic, as well as being an artist, and he wrote a great, I found a telegram at the Moderna Musette, in which he's writing about, um, he's writing, I can't remember who he's writing, maybe it was at Leon Zanabin, and he was writing about his relationship to pop art, and he said, pop art is not, it's not Rauschenberg, pop art is not, um, about American consumerism, it is not this, it is not that. He literally runs a list of all the things that pop is not. And I think that that is a very, it was a very important discovery for us because we wanted to frame the concept of the show around a set of resistances. Many artists didn't actually initially really want to be in a show about pop, you know, because the term itself had become so refined and so narrow. And it's interesting, when you go back to that early moment, you can see there these artists are grappling with the language of pop. So for us to have an ex a, a corner of the exhibition that has such political thread and really opens up a topic to a range of different discourses and, and ideologies and positions in relationship to the world, it enabled us to convey to artists that we were trying to take our own resistant position in relationship to this idea and to this work. So. Yeah. We, had to, we had to persuade a lot of people to be in this show, and we did that by saying, look, it's not the pop. We all know we're, we're actually trying to make something, as Olga said earlier, that's capacious enough to include you. So we're trying to shift the dial a little bit um, in order to do this, this exhibition in the first place. But let's keep going. Um